In a previous video, I discussed how you find the minimum variance portfolio for a two-stock portfolio. And I actually drew this out here and showed you this efficient frontier in um, standard deviation and expected return space. And actually, I showed you what the different standard deviations were based on different percentages of stock A and stock B. I also did the um, expected return as well for those different percentages. Now, to minimize this, actually, you could just look down here and keep looking until you find the smallest one, but it won't be exactly optimized, but it'll give you an idea of what the um, percentages are. The way you technically do it is you take the portfolio variance, or actually the portfolio standard deviation equation, and you um, minimize it with respect to one of these choice variables, how much you put in A or how much you put in B. The two have to add up to 100%. So what's portfolio variance? It's the percentage you put in A squared times the variance of A plus the percentage you put in B squared times the variance of B plus two times the percent in A times the percent in B times the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B times the correlation between A and B. And if you have that equation, and actually you take the square root to get the standard deviation, you can find the percent that you put in B or A by differentiating that with respect to um, one of these choice variables, the percent in A or the percent in B, setting it equal to zero and doing the algebra. If you do that, this happens to be um, determined in how much you put into B, it turns out that it's the variance of A squared minus standard deviation of A times standard deviation of B times the correlation between A and B divided by the variance of A plus the variance of B minus two times the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B times the correlation between A and B. And in fact, that's what I put in here. I put in this, this equation here to find out what the um, minimum variance percentage should be in uh, for B. And then if I know how much I put into B, I know how much I put into A. If I put 33% into A, I'm sorry, into B, I have to put 67% into A because the two add up to 100%. There's actually an easier way to do this than figuring out the optimization problem. And I've done that over here um, by putting in a percentage for A, a percentage for B. I've got a constraint in here, which is that these two have to add up to 100%. And I have the same formula for standard deviation here. So let's see how this works out. How are we going to solve it? We can use something called the solver function. So if you go up here to the data tab and you click it on, you may see this um, solver function here. If you don't see it, you're going to need to install it. But that's very easy to do. Just hit fi the File tab, Options, add-ins and then down here it says Excel add-in so click go and just make sure the solver add-in is clicked okay you may also want to add the analysis tool pack which allows you to do regression and some other statistical functions correlation analysis but right now we just need the solver add-in so you click that on now we click on the solver function and you have information here I already solved this one but you're going to tell it what you want to solve for. So what's my objective function? This right here. I want to do the standard deviation, so hit enter. You can choose to maximize it or minimize it. We want to minimize it because we want the minimum variance. What variables do we want to change? We want to change these two, right? The percentage in A and the percentage in B. So we can hit enter there. And I'm going to put a constraint in. Let me delete this constraint. And I'm going to add a constraint. I'm going to tell you that this constraint is that what's in this cell, which is the formula um, of the percent in A plus the percent in B. Um, and I want it to be not less than or equals. I want it to be equals. 
And what should it equal? It should equal 100%. Be careful, don't put one in there. I tried putting one in there and I kept getting an error message. And you say, okay, so it's going to constrain that. So you're making sure that you can't have more than 100% invested in these two securities, all right? So whatever you put in A, whatever percent you don't put in A, you have to put in B. You'll also want to check this make unconstrained variables non-negative. We don't want to short sell, you know, lots of B, so we buy more of A. So let's click that on and let's click solve. It's going to ask you to keep the solver solution. Let's say OK. And what did we get? We got the same solution we got before. 33.33% um, for B, which means 66.67% for a, and the minimum variance portfolio in this case, because they're perfectly negatively correlated in this example, is zero. Let's try and say we have a correlation of zero. All right, that changes this, but this is not the correct solution. This is not the same solution as this one, because this does not resolve the solution. It only recalculates standard deviation because I changed the correlation coefficient and that's part of the um, standard deviation equation. So let me go back to solver. I don't really have to change anything. It's all the same variables. Let me just say solve and say okay. And now we get the same thing. 20% 20 in um, B and 80% in A and we get the same minimum standard deviation. So this is a great way to solve it without having to figure out this optimization um, equation. Uh, you know, you can, you know, if you're good with math and good with calculus, you could solve it out yourself or you could perhaps find it in a textbook. But, um, you know, it can be sort of tedious to solve. Here, Solver does this for you.